That police stop in Virginia, the trial of former police officer Derek Chauvin and Sunday's deadly police shooting in Minnesota, have refocused attention on the issue of police reform. Just days after George Floyd's death last year, then-candidate Joe Biden promised that within his first 100 days in office, he would create a police oversight board. But as CBS News White House reporter Bo Erickson reports, police reform efforts have stalled in Washington. Bo joins me now from Washington, and we're also joined by CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist Antoine Seawright. Welcome. It is good to see you both. Now, before we discuss police reform, Antoine, I just want to get your reaction to these disturbing videos. What did you think when you saw them? They broke my heart. Uh, I'm a 36-year-old black man from South Carolina. I always remind myself that could have so easily been me. Uh, when my mother texted me today and said, you're okay, I can only feel the fear uh, because the phone call she could have received saying Antoine was killed or hurt uh, by a routine traffic stop. Routine traffic stops are no longer uh, the thing, when, no longer routine when it comes to people who look like me. And so when you see statistics that say black people are two to three times more likely to be killed or mishandled, i.e. treated like a second-class citizen during a traffic stop, this these tapes we saw over the weekend add true background color to it, Elaine. So, uh, Bo, let me ask you, given this renewed attention on police reform, what is the status of a National Police Oversight Commission under President Biden? Because I believe it's April 29th uh, will be the 100th day in office for President Biden. What's the status of this police commission? And to put it on, in context, I, I covered uh, Joe Biden's campaign last year, and he was ele elected in part because of this racial justice movement. This is one element that he promised to try to tackle. And as you mentioned, just days after George Floyd was killed last year, he promised to implement this police oversight board within his first 100 days if elected president. And so last week, my colleague Tim Perry and I, we started reporting if, if this was actually going to happen on time, and we started to hear that this may not be happening at all. And so then last night, we finally got official notification from the White House, from Susan Rice, the domestic policy uh, director there, the domestic policy council. And she said that the commission and the police oversight board are not happening, not at all, because through their consultations with civil rights organization, organizations, they said that the most effective way to deal with police reform is through the legislation route. There is a bill up on on Capitol Hill right now in the House, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act that the president has thrown his weight behind. Uh, but for people who remember what happened last year, that is the same bill that did not pass last year. And so there are a lot, there's a lot of pessimism if anything can get done on Capitol Hill anyway. So, Antoine, let me ask you, what's your reaction to the what Bo just uh, reported along with uh, his colleague Tim Perry that, um, you know, this oversight board doesn't look like it's going to be happening for now? Well, I think people, the American people, Democrats and Republicans, elected Joe Biden to adjust the tone and temperature in this country and to deal with the issues. And when I say issues, issues like police reform, where, fifth, where we see a number of polls that indicate that over 50 percent of the American people want something done on this issue. But I would say that it's bigger than Joe Biden. Uh, I think the governor of Minnesota is right by saying he is demanding the legislature to hold reform conversations on police reform. And I think that should happen all across the country, from at the federal level, the state level, and the local level, because this is about getting us toward a more perfect union. And I think that has to to be the focus. And as it relates to the people in Washington, D.C., I think Joe Biden is going to do his part, but I think the U.S. Senate uh, has been the holdup uh, in a real way from passing reform last year around this time. And now here we are again, same conversation, same body that has not done what the American people wants them to do. You know, Bo, I'm curious. I know, obviously, things can change very quickly, but have you gotten any indication in light of these videos that we have seen that maybe there might be some kind of change in the Biden administration's position with respect to this oversight board? Because you mentioned that legislation um, on the table right now and the, and the difficulty, though, that we've seen, you know, in the past when it comes to this issue. But has there been any kind of movement or signs that there might be movement in just, say, the last 12, 24 hours or so? 
So the leaders of that House bill, and it is reintroduced by Congresswoman Karen Bass. She's from California. She, she introduced it last year. She reintroduced it this year. I spoke with her just a couple of days ago, and she said that she is working. She is negotiating with uh, Republican Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina and also Democratic Senator Cory Booker, Cory Booker from New Jersey. She says she's trying to find some type of middle ground there, and she told me that there should be some movement in the next couple of weeks. She would not say what that was. I tried, and I will keep trying to uh, ping her to see uh, when that when we could expect that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's just uh, important to note just real quickly about what this actually does. Um, it talks about increasing body cameras for police officers and increasing data for police misconduct for uh, officers who have gotten in trouble in the past. It also would ban police uh, neck holds and carotid holds, these maneuvers that cut off uh, both breathing and and uh, blood flow to the brain, actually. And also, this would outlaw uh, no-knock warrants for drug-related cases. That's what happened in Breonna Taylor's case last year. And lastly, this bill on the House that they're trying to get through, it also end qualified immunity, which essentially uh, prevents civilians from suing police officers who they believe have, act who they believe have acted inappropriately. That is something that cannot happen right now. There is um, not a wholesale buy-in that all of those elements are needed. This is one of the reasons why nothing happened last summer. We'll certainly continue to watch and see if there is any uh, kind of movement. Um, as I know, you, Bo, and, and uh, Tim are, are going to watch it as well. Finally, Antoine, just on a, on a personal level, you touched on this at the top, but, you know, we have seen these videos come out time and time again. And I wonder, from your perspective, what is the message that they send collectively? Well, I can tell you what, I think the American people are tired of police reform or system reform being used as political football, kick, punt, uh, return, throw out of bounds, run out of the clock, and nothing is done. Uh, for black people, and I speak from that perspective as a black man, in the words of Fannie Lou Hayman, we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. If we leave our home, the prayer is that we return safely. And God forbid there is a speed trap somewhere or a broken taillight or headlight, uh, we run the risk of our parents and grandparents planning a funeral. And so I think the message these videos should send to everyone is that we have to not just fix a part of the system with police reform, but we have to fix the entire system because even if someone is arrested the right way, Lane, and they make it to jail if it calls for that, guess what? The system would indicate that black people are two to three times more likely to have a heavier sentence than people who do not look like them. Uh, not to mention if you look at the makeup of the judicial system in this country. And so we have to have real collective reform in a big way and not just one element of reform when it comes to dealing with the police. And my hope and my prayer is that people will not look at this in a partisan lens, but this is a bipartisan issue because this impacts all of us when these things are happening. All right, we're going to continue to cover it all. Bo Erickson and Antoine Seawright, it's good to see you both. Thank you very much.